until today, nobody at the Daily Wire had commented on Candace Owens' departure from the Daily Wire. Ben Shapiro went on Piers Morgan show where he was asked and he said, I'm not going to talk about it. Candace Owens hasn't publicly talked about it. I've done some reporting on it. I've spoken to people who are familiar with what happened, very familiar firsthand. I've seen some things, so that's why I feel comfortable saying what I'm saying about what actually happened. But Ben Shapiro went on the podcast of Dave Rubin. As I said, both of them are two people who have gotten very, very rich in right-wing politics in the last six or seven years by opposing cancel culture and defending free speech. And yet they're also very ardent supporters of Israel. And they both have on occasion in the last several months, and we've reported this before, violated principles they said to believe, they believed in in the name of supporting and defending Israel. Here, for example, was one of the more amazing examples, which was on October 12th, when Dave Rubin, who has spent years saying that the West is collapsing because of its abandonment of the free speech values, responded to news that France had, violate, had banned pro-Palestinian protests, had made it illegal to go out into the street and protest in favor of the Palestinians. You were allowed in France to go and protest in favor of Israel. You just couldn't go and protest in favor of Palestinians. Instead of saying what he would have said if he were being consistent with everything he said over the last six years that made him very rich, which was censorship is wrong, we need free discourse in the West, and said he said the opposite. He said, maybe the West has a chance. Maybe, meaning, although I've been saying for seven years that the West is collapsing because of a lack of free speech, now I'm going to say, now that the censorship is aimed at people I disagree with, the salvation of the West lies in censorship. A complete abandonment of his principles in defense of this foreign country to which he is so passionately devoted. I invited Dave Rubin on my show about my criticism of that statement, he had several reasons why he couldn't come on and just has never made it on. Now, Ben Shapiro did something quite similar. The military intelligence company, the contractor Palantir, announced on December 5th, and Palantir's CEO is a fanatical Israel supporter, that they were setting aside 180 jobs solely for Jewish students who believe that they are being targeted or feeling uncomfortable by anti-Semitism on college campuses. These are jobs not available to Muslims, not available to uh, any other religion, to Christians, only to Jews. This is the kind of set aside that obviously people like Ben Shapiro have been ranting and raving against as evil. And yet because in this particular case, Palantir was setting aside jobs for people in Ben Shapiro's group, not in other groups, Ben Shapiro went on to Twitter and in response said two words, love this, and then even Ben Shapiro's most ardent followers spent the whole day saying, what do you mean? How do you love a set-aside reserved only for Jews? You've been arguing for more than a decade that these kind of set-asides are illegal and immoral. And then Ben Shapiro had to go back on to Twitter and very reluctantly say, oh, I guess all these jobs should be available for everybody. But then why did he comment on it at all? If they were available for anyone, it would have just been the creation of 180 jobs. That's the abandonment of principle in defense of Israel that we're seeing constantly on the right. That was what the first segment was about as well. So these two got together and Dave Rubin questioned Ben Shapiro and tried to extract an answer about why it is that Candace Owens no longer works at the Daily Wire. And Ben uh, Shapiro ended up saying some very interesting things in explaining why that was justified. All right, so let's do the elephant in the room for just a moment, because I saw you this week on Piers Morgan. He asked you repeatedly about Candace. Uh, you repeatedly basically said... I won't talk about don't that. Want yeah, to talk I'll say about that here, it. too. I, I yeah, <laughs> and that's fine. And, and, you know, it's interesting because we all sort of came up together to different extents and we've all done a million things together in public events and networks and all those things. It seems to me that at this moment, she's now a free agent. She happened to end up on Locals, where which I created, and we they were a platform, not a publisher that you guys are. Can you at least talk to just sort of just sort of where it's at now. She's not with you. She's free. She's and, free to do and... whatever she wants to do, you know, to be wherever she wants to be. 
Now, the difference between a publisher like The Daily Wire and a platform like Locals is obviously that a platform should have a very broad range of speech that it allows, including speech that maybe even the creators don't believe is inside what they would consider to be the Overton window. That's a very different thing than direct subsidization of particular opinions. So the Daily Wire would not have a host, would not pay a host who was staunchly pro-abortion. Mm -hmm. They'd have no obligation to pay a host who is staunchly pro-abortion. Okay, now, that distinction is one I think is valid. One of the places where Candace Owens decided she was going to go after getting pushed out of the Daily Wire as a result of commentary on Israel and the influence of pro-Israel activists in the United States was to locals, which is, as I've said many times, part of the Rumble platform. It was actually co-founded by Dave Rubin as a free speech platform. It is a free speech platform. It accommodates a very wide range of views, including, just like Rumble, views that might get censored on big tech platforms that have been censored on big tech platforms. It's basically the written version of Rumble. It's kind of like the substack of Rumble. It's the place where we publish our original written journalism, where our community exists. That's one of the places where Candace Owens went. And so the distinction Ben Shapiro is drawing, which is, look, a media outlet like the Daily Wire doesn't have the obligation to employ Everybody, if people have views that we don't agree with or that we're not comfortable with being associated with, we have every right to fire them. That's different than, say, Twitter or Facebook or Google or Rumble, which should accommodate a wide range of views. I agree with that. The problem, though, is that we just got done with this major controversy where NBC News had hired the former Republican chair, Ronna uh, McDaniel, and then MSNBC host objected to her hiring on exactly the same grounds that Ben Shapiro just said, which is, we're not saying we think Ronna McDaniel should be barred from being heard on Facebook or Google or anywhere else. We just don't think that because of her views on election denialism that she challenged or suggested that there was fraud in the 2020 election, we don't think that's a view with which NBC News should be associated. And we have every right as NBC News to decide, well, we don't want to be associated with this particular view, and therefore we think Rhonda McDaniel should be fired. And that's what happened. NBC fired her. They withdrew the contract. And almost everybody I know on the right said this was an act of grave repression, including me. It meant that within the media, you will be fired or you cannot be heard if you express certain views that are held by a large number of people. So how can it be the case that Daily Wire has the right to just fire even its most popular host the minute they step over some line that the Daily Wire draws on Israel? And that's perfectly fine for the Daily Wire to do, but somehow NBC News is acting repressively or immorally if its line is election denialism. And it says, you know what, we don't want anybody on our airways who question the legitimacy of the 2020 election. Why are those acts different? But here's the real meat of the matter. When Ben Shapiro tries to explain what line it is that Candace Owens crossed. And so when it comes to the host on The Daily Wire, obviously everyone is able to say what they want. Nobody ever comes to me and says, you can't say X. Nobody ever says that to Walsh. No one ever said that to Candace. But the reality is that there is an Overton window at the Daily Wire. Obviously, there was a non-meeting of the minds. That's pretty much all I can say on this. Uh, and, you know, a, a lot of this has happened publicly. Uh, in the, but you know, to the extent that, that the Daily Wire is, in fact, not a publisher, it is a pla that, that is, in fact, not a platform, it is a publisher, that means that there is no moral obligation for the Daily... And there's no free speech problem with the Daily Wire saying, we don't wish to pay a particular host or that host saying, I don't wish to work here anymore because again there's a parting of the ways that i'm that you know is not really open for discussion at this point do, uh, does it surprise you that so okay so oh, let's hear this question so many people even on our side of this are confused about that as it relates to free speech and quote-unquote cancel culture like severing a business tie as long as you're not throwing someone in jail and they're able to be everywhere else is not uh, i'm not super culture, surprised at the controversy yeah. okay these people honestly if i'm being totally honest they make me sick. They cannot think in any form of principle whatsoever. One of the biggest media controversies in the last five years was that the New York Times had 
published an op-ed by Tom Cotton during the Black Lives Matter movement in which Tom Cotton advocated that the U.S. military should be deployed onto the streets of the United States to crush the Black Lives Matter movement on the grounds that that movement had become systemically violent. And many, many journalists inside the New York Times said that is outside of our Overton window, as Ben Shapiro put it. Overton window, Ben Shapiro is really not using that phrase correctly. The Overton window really is a theory that says you want to create as broad of a range of political views as possible. You want to widen the Overton window if you're a radical so that views that have been deemed way far outside of the mainstream, get closer and closer to the mainstream. Ben Spear, when he says Overton Window, is saying there's a range of views that I may not agree with, but these are the acceptable views within our media outlet. And you can't cross the line here, and you can't cross the line here because then you're outside of the Overton Window. And he's saying we as a media outlet have every right to set the boundaries of what we consider to be acceptable views. And if you go outside of those boundaries, we have the right to fire you, and free speech is not implicated by that. Okay, so if that's the, if that's the case, why was there so much uproar when the New York Times decided to fire two of its editors for publishing Tom Cotton's op-ed that called for the deployment of American military to quell the Black Lives Matter movement? The New York Times editors were simply saying what Ben uh, Shapiro was saying. We have an Overton window, and that op-ed was outside of our Overton window. We don't want to be associated with views that call for the U.S. military to crush a social justice movement against racism. That was their perspective, and we don't want to be associated with that view. We're not saying these editors should be put in prison. We're not saying Tom Cotton should be put in prison for that view. We just don't want to host this view. We don't want to subsidize editors who would publish this sort of thing. I don't know, a single person on the right who defended the New York Times there. Just like I don't know of a single person on the right who defended NBC News from getting rid of Ronnie McDaniel. It was presented as a kind of crisis in free discourse that within major media outlets, you cannot express certain political views that are within the mainstream without getting fired. And yet here is Ben Shapiro trying to justify why Candace Owens is gone from the Daily Wire, not because of a business reason. Outside of Ben Shapiro, Candace Owens is the biggest name at the Daily Wire. She has the biggest audience. They're probably comparable in terms of the number of people who watch their show, who listen to their podcast. Maybe Ben Shapiro is bigger. But Candace Owens is in that same category. There's nobody else at the Daily Wire who competes with Candace Owens. I guess Justin Peterson if you want, but it's the point I'm making is that Candace Owens is a huge uh, draw. That's not, it's not for that business reason. But what is true is that the Daily Wire was started with investment from a right-wing billionaire, millions of dollars, a pro-Israel billionaire, and Ben Shapiro is essentially saying that we have limits on what you can say about Israel and Candace Owens went outside of them. Now, if you're comfortable with that and you think that's fine to fire journalists because they express political views outside of some line, then how can you criticize NBC News for doing the same with Ronna McDaniel or the New York Times for doing the same when deciding they don't want any Trump supporters there? Now, let's listen to the rest of Ben Shapiro's answer to this next question because this too is extremely illuminating. Honestly, because to, to a certain extent, I think that there's been a, a reaction on the right to the excesses of the left. So because what the left did is they said that the Overton window ought to be closed so tight that no one can get inside the Overton window. Basically, if you're to the right of Hillary Clinton, you can't be allowed inside Welcome the Overton to my window. World, yes, exactly. <laughs> and, and not just with regard to platforms, but with regard to publishers. So, for example, this week, NBC News deciding that Rana McDaniel was too much for them. Rana right. McDaniel can't work at NBC News. The sacred halls of NBC News must not be sullied by the former head of the RNC, Jen Psaki, however, can have a show on MSNBC, despite being the press secretary for the White House five seconds ago. Right? The, the, the right's response to that is, I think, correct to say, you guys have shut the Overton window too tight. But I think some elements of the right have basically said there is no Overton window. The Overton window should be completely exploded with regard not just to platforms, with which I kind of agree, but with regard to publishers. So, All right. So, I mean, do you, do you see what he's saying? He's saying... We're all drawing Overton windows, 
Meaning, and again, he's misusing this term, but what he really means is we all have limits on uh, lines that you cannot cross on certain issues. And the reason I'm angry about what NBC News did, even though it's exactly the same as what the Daily Wire did, is just because their line is wrong and mine is right. Except you can go to the, you can go to NBC News. They have a lot of Israel supporters at NBC News, and you can support Israel there, but then you can also criticize Israel. They have a lot of Israel critics at NBC News, or at least at MSNBC as well. And they have debates about this topic. Apparently you can't have that debate though at the Daily Wire because you're about to hear Ben Shapiro describe what the line is that Candace Owen crossed specifically when it came to Israel. Well, NBC News not only has an obligation to hire Rana McDaniel, NBC News has the obligation to hire Alex Jones, for example. Right, which, I, I which just makes true. no sense at a business level beyond beyond free speech. I mean, there's a reason that networks exist. It, it right, they have, editor, they have editorial yeah. positions. Yeah. Daily Wire has a very strong editorial position on a wide variety of, of issues. And by the way, I should say that, you know, there are a lot of people who are suggesting this is about disagreements over Israel. I mean, I can safely say it is not about disagreements over Israel to the extent that without reference to Candace at all here, Matt Walsh has taken the position that America ought not be involved in the Middle East at all. Matt Walsh's position, so far as I understand it, and I've talked to him about it, is that Israel, in a conflict between Israel and Hamas, Israel is obviously a more moral party than the genocidal terrorist group Hamas, but also it's very far away. He doesn't care and it doesn't involve America. That's just a pure isolationist position. I disagree with it. I think it's wrong. I think that, that it's short-sighted. But again, he's on our platform. That, that is well within the range of acceptable discourse at the Daily Wire. So, okay, so that's the line at the Daily Wire. You're allowed to take Matt Walsh's position. Matt Walsh is safe, I guess, for now. He's allowed to work at the Daily Wire, even though he doesn't support the United States financing Israel's military and Israel's wars. On the ground said, it's not our business. You're allowed to say that. Why? Because, explained Ben Shapiro, at the end of the day, Ben, Matt Walsh does affirm the moral superiority of Israel. He, he, he says, look, I don't want the U.S. financing Israel, but of course Israel is morally superior to its enemies. And as long as you say that, as long as you pay that kind of homage to Israel, then you're on the right side of the line. You're permitted to say, I don't think the U.S. should finance Israel, but notice too that Matt Walsh, though I guess he has said this before, he barely ever talks about it. And I really wonder what would happen if he actually went on a crusade about it, if that was a primary focus of Matt Walsh's uh, commentary instead of what it is, which is trans issues and LGBT issues and the culture war. It's one thing for Matt Walsh every, once every four months to say, I don't think the U.S. has any business caring about Israel and Hamas. That's not my war. I wonder what would happen, though, if he really went on a crusade about it. I don't think the U.S. should be financing Israel. I, I wonder if he'd be within the Overton window at the Daily Wire. But in any event, we don't know that because Matt Walsh barely talks about Israel. And what Ben Shapiro is saying is that's acceptable because at the end of the day, Matt Walsh affirms that Israel is the superior party. And as long as you affirm Israel's superiority, its moral superiority, we'll let you occasionally as an aside question whether the U.S. should be financing it from an isolationist perspective. But what you cannot do is make the sort of commentary that Candace Owens made, such as implying but not stating that Israel was committing a genocide. And one of the tweets that really angered Ben Shapiro at the start was when Candace Owens said, I think no country has the right to commit genocide. And she was very purposeful about not identifying any country. But it was clear the context was Israel. She had talked before about the sadness she feels watching Palestinian children die. That too was one of the tweets that generated anger. And then more recently, she's been into these arguments with the ADL and with rabbis accusing her of anti-Semitism. And that was the claim. That's always the claim. That is in every case when Greg Abbott, the governor of Texas, as we discussed in our first segment, is trying to force Texas universities to constrain the range of free speech. Of course, what he's arguing is not, I'm censoring dissent on Israel. He's saying this kind of criticism of Israel or this kind of advocacy for pro-Palestinians 
crosses into racism, into anti-Semitism, and that's why it needs to be censored. That's the left liberal view for censorship as well. Nobody on the left ever says, I'm censoring dissent. They say, these views that we dislike cross over into bigotry. They're anti-black racism, they're transphobic, they're homophobic, they're xenophobic, they're Islamophobic, they're misogynistic, and that's why we're censoring them. Exactly the same thing that Ben Shapiro is saying. Oh no, it's not about Israel, it's about anti-Semitism, but of course those two things get conflated. Now, let's look at the last part of this uh, video, uh, just so we can hear uh, the, the final part of it. Was doing and got within the range of acceptable discourse at the Daily Wire. So, you know, the, the notion that you have to mirror my exact perspectives on, on what Israel is doing in Gaza is obviously not true based on the roster of hosts that we that we currently have. There are a lot of other factors, obviously, at play. Right. So actually, let's connect that to something else going on. That we All right. Did. So, look, you know, five months ago when this first happened, Jeremy Boring came out and said, Candace Owens is not going to be fired from the Daily Wire. She is more than welcome to stay at the Daily Wire. We don't have litmus tests for our hosts. She's free to disagree vehemently with Ben Shapiro, even on the views that he most closely, most passionately believes in. He also said within the last three or four months, Candace Owens is one of the most important voices of this generation, heaping the most intense praise on her. There has not been a decline in Candace Owens' audience. Quite the contrary, if anything, Candace Owens' audience has increased. Certainly it's maintained. So if you really want to believe that Candace Owens, as recently as five months ago, was beloved at the Daily Wire, to the point where they were saying she's one of the most important voices of the generation, she's one of the most popular and influential and therefore profitable voices in conservative politics, has a place forever at the Daily Wire, never going to be fired because of her views. And then suddenly, five months later, the ADL denounces her as an anti-Semite because of her Israel views, and various influential rabbis do too, and now she's gone from the Daily Wire, and it's not because of her views on Israel. I guess you're willing to believe anything. But even Ben Shapiro... Though he started off saying, I don't really want to comment on it, commented on quite a bit on it and said, there's a line at the Daily Wire that you cannot cross. If you want to stay on the right side of the line and you want to keep your job, you'll do what Matt Walsh does. Occasionally, if you feel like a little bit of dissent on Israel is something you need to express, go ahead as long as it's just very occasional and it's accompanied by your affirmation of Israel's superiority. But if you're not willing to do that, if you're willing to say, I believe Palestinian lives are of equal value, that the Israelis are not morally superior in what they're doing in Gaza, that's when you cross the line, and that's when you're no longer at the Daily Wire. And if you're somebody who thinks like it's fine to fire journalists because of their views, then you have to let NBC and the New York Times do that also. Thanks for watching this clip from System Update, our live show that airs every Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern, exclusively on Rumble. You can catch the full nightly shows live or view the backlog of episodes for free on our Rumble page. You can also find full episodes the morning after they air across all major podcasting platforms, including Spotify and Apple. All the information you need is linked below. We hope to see you there.